Affinity Photo can be used to create all kinds of amazing designs, curved designs like this, all made from a very basic curve. How to do it, PC or Mac. First thing to do is just remove that layer. Go over here and select the pen tool. With the pen tool, simply click and then click again and then just drag. So you drag out these anchor points or direction points so you can get a curve, just very simple curve like that. Now you can see in this, I've got dots. So how do I get that? Well, what you need to do is go along here, along the top bar. Fill is set to nothing. The stroke, I can show you quickly how I change the gradient, but I'm just gonna go, here's what I'm using, the gradient, or swatches, any of the any of the gradients you've got, any of the swatches, you obviously probably have different gradients than that. So with that, got there. Also, if you want the dots, just click here, and I'm gonna go for about 24, 25, and go to this dash line style. You've got option here, solid, but also you've got dash line style. Make certain all these are all set to the first, all set there, and then just go down here, set this to zero, and then set that to 1.8, and you can vary it. So if you put 1.8 or you put 1.1, you see it ends up crunching closer. Now, if you change this, and you can see it'll become more sort of oblong, but I'm going to go with zero. 25, 1.1 here I'm using, but I actually want it slightly bigger there, so 1.6. So I've got a number of dots to use, but the gradient itself, if you want to manipulate it, just go over here, select the gradient tool. Unfortunately, it defaults to fill, even though there's no fill, you think it would just work it out and say stroke, and then you can manipulate that. You can see you've got the gradient tool and you can reposition it, maybe you want less red, etc. So you change that, move tool. So with that, you can also add some layer styles, a bevel, etc. You can also add shadows, but if you do that, the brush stroke, I think, always looks a bit darker. So I prefer, personally, not to add any shadows, but I do like a bit of three-dimensional. So effects, then go to 3D. You, of course, could use bevel and boss as well. That's another option. But then just set the radius, push that up to about 25, 30, and you get a nice spherical design. You, of course, can manipulate profiles, change the direction, light source, all those kind of things. Again, out of shadow could be added as well, if you want, and close. So I've got this design now. I want to convert it into a brush. Need to rasterize it. Need to turn it into a pixel layer. So go to layer and down here to a rasterize. The rasterize, preserve layer effects. Just turn that off. That means it's all part of the same object the layer effect is no longer available. So click rasterize. And you can see now you've got the 3D effect still, but now it's just a pixel without a 3D effect. You could of course add another 3D effect on top of that if you want. What you now can do is you can turn this into a brush. So let's move that out of the way. Go to the brushes, the brushes panel, you can find that in window, like all the panels, so brushes, layers, etc. Just go over here to the right side menu. Right side menu, new brush and selection. If it wasn't turned into a, into a pixel layer, it would not be available. So new brush from selection, and then you can see it here. Image brush 30, obviously it's gonna be a different name. You can rename it, of course, right click, edit the brush, all those sort of rename brush, but also let's double click it. Same as edit the brush. And you're in the brush editor now. What you can also do is, I'm just gonna create a new layer. So layer and new layer. I want to work with that. So make certain you go back to the brush tool. Here's the brush tool. Press B. Press B on the keyboard and then you can see your brush. Lovely preview there. But actually I like to just apply it. So if I apply it now you can see what happens. It just generates that which is not what I want. You can modify the size. You can reduce it down. Personally it's I think a bit too big there. But you can change the spacing. Now if I apply it you can see now if I apply it you can create these lovely sort of flowing nodes. Now unfortunately, I think one of the, it doesn't go down to 0 0.1 because sometimes someone's setting you can actually still see very subtle, a bit of a gap, a still subtle gap and sometimes you just notice it more than others. But also you can change the rotation. So you might decide, you know what, that looks a bit too dark. Let's just push there. So the rotation, just rotate it around and then apply it. And now you're still getting obviously that, but it just looks nice from the preview. Dynamics, just click there, dynamics, and you've got size jitter. You might want to end up doing that. Now I'm using an art pad and pen. 
So it's not much use if you're just using the mouse, but you can obviously, you can keep it just like that, perfectly reasonable to use it. But you can, if you want, add some size data so you can just see, you can get some small, large, etc. Also, cycling. So pressure, that's I'm using obviously art pad and pen, but you can go for cycling. And you can see you can get effects like that. But also, go here, profile. Don't ignore it. Profile is really good. Looks slightly odd. You think, ooh, what's that? Well, just click there. Got these dots. And you just modify it. And as you do that, you can see results in a variety of different designs. And you've got some profiles. So you can get something like that. So again, it just goes in and out, different size. I think creates it. And again, that can be used, of course, with the mouse. I'm just using the mouse now, not obviously the pen. So with this, you can also add rotation or scatter. So rotation, you get effects like that. Now, obviously in this case, when you've got it random, it just becomes a bit of a mess, a bit of, but it fills the screen super quick with lots of whatever you've got, spherical designs, square designs, images, because of course, these don't have to be filled with gradients. They could be filled with images, different images. Just separate them and create, but you could fill them with different images. That's another. Now, of course, I used a curve. You don't have to use a curve to create that. You could make it up of different sized circles, different sized circles in a sort of curved design. Quite easy, just create the curve so you can see obviously nicely the curves you want. Create lots of them, put them on top and fill them with different images to create a variety of different designs that way. Or maybe different gradients in each of those dots instead of just obviously a solid color. So rotation, you can then go down here, instead of random, you can use cycling. And now you can see what happens there, you get this really quite odd, unusual designs where it sort of follows a weird curve. And you can see now, going around, and again, with a mouse. This is using a mouse. It doesn't have to be an art pad or pen. So I just move that out of the way. And you can see, just fill that very quickly with that. Also, another option, again, go over here. So just click here and you can then change this. So you can see as you just by subtle just change, you get a variety of different, very unusual. And just click there, drag that out, get something like that. And again, when you apply it, the result will obviously be a different brush design. But click there, you've got profiles as well. So maybe something like that one or that one. So obviously that one there, great. I think that's a really nice one. And you can see, fill it very quickly there. You could finish at this point, but there's also another option, which I think is really good, Hue Jitter. So just down here, just push that. Now, of course, what it generates, lots of random color. So all the dots will be different color. Makes more like a noise design, but it's still, I still think, pretty decent way of flowing. But it does fill the screen basically with noise. But you can control it a bit more. Just simply go to site click instead of random. And then you can see the colors will change from red to yellow to green, blue, etc. Now it's a pity there's no anti-cycling. I guess they didn't think it was a good idea because if you got that, how would you work size? I suppose it would reverse. That would have been nice to reverse in the, but they didn't. But I could see sort of add additional couple of entries, cyclic, anti-cyclic, maybe different wave designs within that would have been nice as well. But what you can do, just click here. And again, you've got exactly the same. So you can manipulate it further. So if you want more, maybe more reds, maybe more yellows coming into it, maybe go click there, you can see reds. Maybe that one, that one, get more blues maybe, and so on. A variety of different colorful designs can be created that way. And you can see then applied there. I think that's a much more controlled approach. And close. Also what you can do, you can use this with symmetry, because of course you've got all these options. I haven't used any of these features, but I'm just gonna to go to symmetry. So turn that on. Also set the lock. So with that, you can then, and I'm using four. Symmetry four. You could of course use eight, ten, but I think sometimes it just becomes a bit, a bit messy. And you can see then as you apply it, just apply it like that. And of course, what you can do, you don't have to have the size of the brush, because sometimes if it's the size of the brush too big, it just fills the screen way too quick. But if you produce down, you can see produce lovely sort of fractal-like designs, curvatures there. And of course, you don't have to fill the whole thing, you can just fill parts of it, different places, and so on. 
create a variety of designs that way. Also, of course, once you've done it, filters, go to distort, maybe go for mirror or deform. So mirror, you can see then you get a lovely, say, four again, get designs like that. Maybe change your origin point and so on to create some truly weird sort of bead-like tapestry designs and click apply. Or undo that with this design. Once you've created all these obviously, designs like that, you can always go over here, select the move tool, then go up here to layer, new pattern layer from selection. And then with that, you can resize this pattern and then go to say mirror. And you can see then you've got this mirror design. And of course you can resize that, rotate it. Also, it's a layer. As a layer, you can just duplicate it. So hold down the ultra option key. And then with that, you can go to blend modes and you can see you can go for maybe different, which makes it very noise. But I think lighten creates an interesting effect. So you've got this sort of like ghostly look above your pattern as well. It's always an option. So just let's remove that and remove that pattern there. With this design, you can also distort it as well. Don't have to use mirror, so you can always go to filters, blur, average, distort, or deform, distort and deform. And then add some pins, and then just distort this design like that. Now, you might not want to do that, but I think distort creates some very interesting abstract designs with that still sort of feel of that design. You don't want to push too far and click apply. Always go to filters and repeat deform and distort it even more. Creates a slight, very unusual octopus-like design. Also, undo. With these designs, you can always select just part of it. You don't have to select all of it. You can go here, elliptical marquee tool, just select a circle a bit like that, or a square, and then go to layer, new pattern layer from selection. And then you've got, obviously, a completely different pattern on top. See the circle design, which you can then manipulate further with layers and effects. Maybe go for a 3D effect there and so on to create all kinds of unique sort of bumps and lumps in that sort of design. So let's just remove that now. And what you can do with this pixel layer, let's just remove that now. You've still got this design. You can manipulate it further. Only trouble is the spacing. Got a problem that when you create it, you've got these gaps. And because they're uniform, it doesn't really make any difference if you change it to something else. You put it to a rectangle. As long as you've got those gaps, you will end up with a similar looking brush, which is not ideal. But of course, you can distort this brush. So this start point. So just resize it a bit. Don't want it too big. Now, of course, distorting it, you're going to end up distorting the shapes. So filters distort and deform, and you can do exact same. So just click on here. So you can just add the pins on top of them, very loosely, I just made a mistake there. So just click there, and then you can simply just drag that. So you might decide, you know what, let's just create some droplets that way. And that one there, you can see, because sometimes when you put it in the wrong place, it drags and influences something else. You can see, you move that one out there, maybe drag that one there, and so on, maybe go different, bit too close to that one. Always a pity there's no sphere of influence. It seems to influence everything. It would be nice if you could isolate that. But still, click apply. You could use that as a brush. Maybe hold down the ultra option key and duplicate that design. So you can create a little bit more complex design, which you can then manipulate, repeat to form. You can see, get something like that. And maybe resize it. You don't have to have all the same size. So you can just drag it down and drag it up there and again you might want it to be more like a curve so just drag that bit there bit there and you probably need a few more entries to actually items to make it curved so you got that it could be anything this is a great start point for all kinds of brushes now you've got all those what you can do right click again group right click and then go down to rasterize so it's all turned into one single pixel layer. Well, with that, you can use that as a brush. Maybe again, go to effects and 3D, just add some additional. You can change it and tweak it so you can get a really even more intense sort of like realistic-ish brush stroke. And 
click close. Again, I don't want to go for shadow, just makes it darker, I think. And then go over to brushes. Now, what I like to do, I always like to rasterize that. So rasterize, preserve, turn that off, and rasterize. So it's a one complete layer, and the brushes will not miss bits out. Because sometimes I always find when you use some features in this, if you don't completely rasterize it, sometimes they just completely ignore the layer effects. So brushes, and then go down to new brush from selection. And then you can see now you've got a far more unusual brush. So double click there, and you can see now it's a sort of, it's not as uniform, but if I apply it, let's just go to press B to get the paintbrush and remove symmetry. I don't want the symmetry there. You can see now, as you've got that, you get that sort of far more unusual brush. And of course, exact same as before, you can go here to general, and change the spacing. You're still gonna get streaks, but now all those streaks are all slightly different distance. So it's not all sort of uniform, sort of, okay, just now, apply it there. Now you can see the problem with the 1%. You can still see, just there when you go back that way, you can see some gaps. I think that's a pity. That's why I think it should be 0 0.1 or a bit smaller. I can understand why they had to put it at something. 1% is reasonable, but I think it should have been also, the disappointing with spacing is there's no option for spacing here. And I think spacing would be amazing in this. I can see you could actually have gaps where basically the brush doesn't apply. So you could group and lump different brushes in different places. So you, that sort of thing. Unfortunately, he left that off. Very odd. But again, you've got size jitter. And again, click here. You've got profiles. Use those profiles for pressure. But you can also again use them with cyclic and you can see <coughs> then you've got this sort of design and again just apply it i think the brush is a bit too big so let's just move that let's go down there general sometimes when you create too big a brush maybe that's also another reason why you can see the bigger the brush obviously it's going to be more noticeable and you can see then you've got that effect more strands of sort of whole i don't know that's a very unusual sort of rope purple purples and greens and everything. I think that's just, and you can see you could create a variety of variations with this style of just multiple stretched off. You can, and also you don't have to just have curves. You could have it all over the place, but you want them all sort of grouped together. Okay, what you can do, you can also do exact same as before. You can go to rotation and you can see you can rotate it. You might like that side. Depends what you want to achieve, of course. Maybe like that. I'm just going to keep it like that. Dynamics, size jitter, You've also got rotation jitter. Again, you can have it randomized. Exactly the same for. So then you end up with, but you can see it's sort of, sort of pulsing in, sort of in and out, but it's still fairly noisy like effect, which is not what I wanted to create. Again, rotation, just put it to cyclic, and you can then see you now got this really intense design. And again, click here, profiles, you can get something like that. Again, just simply apply that create all kinds of really weird and worry sort of, but also you can always mix in scatter as well. You don't have to have it so scatter, a little bit of scatter that way. Again, go with cyclic and cyclic. Just try different settings with these things because simply just go with different profiles and you can achieve something different there. So got a bit more structured, an unusual structure to that. I mean, it's still noisy but I still think that's uh, quite nice. Personally, most of the time, I keep scattering down to nothing, but it's an option you can definitely try out. It's a pity some of these other settings, of course, can't be manipulated. Well, you can. Flow jitter. Must have been, oh, flow jitter. That actually creates quite an interesting effect. I hadn't really thought about that in that way. Yes, just simply by trying it, it sort of ends up adding a bit more structure to the, the actual flow of the, the brush, which I guess from the name, Flow is probably a good description, but you can definitely see a bit more structure in that. Also, hue jitter. Of course, that's randomized now. You can see now you've got the random colors. Again, simply go to cyclic, and instead you can then see the reds, blues, green, etc., which you can manipulate, of course. Click here, profiles, different profiles, and then apply it. So let's just go general, and I think that's about the right size, about 276. 
click close. And now you've got your design there. And again, you can, like I say, you can see now a bit more, a bit like the spacing I was thinking about, but you can see it becomes, yeah, a more organic like brush stroke than before when it's just completely smooth, which maybe is not always the best. So you've got that. What you can also do, of course, go here, symmetry. I'm going to go with four. I always think if you push it to 20, it's sometimes good, but you also just go with that. And you can see now, push it out like that, create that sort of design. Or again, change the width. I think always reduce it down with the symmetry. And you can see then, get something like that and drag that into the center. Create some very sort of fractal-like designs. Actually, I'm surprised they didn't offer some sort of options like that. Anyway. Image brush, you can obviously modify it in countless ways. And what you can then do, of course, exactly the same as before, you've got filters, distort, deform. Click there, add some pins. Ah, one mistake that I always make, and I do it every time, and that's make sure you go to the move tool before you use. Without, with the brush tool, sometimes it just unfortunately does not allow that deform pins to be used. Don't know why. Just seems to be an odd feature, but you can see distort that and create that cross there to create some really weird and wonderful background designs or anything like that. I'm just going to undo that now. Also, of course, create patterns and much, much more. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know it in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. Will you be using this feature? Do you think the brushes can be extended maybe in other ways? What would you love to see in brushes in Infinity Photo. I can think of a lot more things that they could add, but unfortunately, obviously not every option is possible. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.